Six months ago, I had zero intention of running for Congress. I was actually enrolled in the Indiana University McKinney School of Law and attending classes until a couple of months ago when I withdrew to focus on this campaign. Serving the Hoosiers of the 4th District, the folks that raised me, has always been a goal and a dream of mine. But there were other goals I had planned to accomplish first. When Congressman Rakita vacated his seat, I waited. I waited and I watched. I expected a hometown candidate to step up, a real son or daughter of the 4th District, willing to put the country before personal interests, political parties, and special interest groups. As it became evident we weren't going to have a candidate like that, I found myself thinking about a Bible verse from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8, which states, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. It's about time a representative from our district and not from Indianapolis, a servant leader, put our country first. What do I mean by country first? I mean crafting legislation and voting on issues that put our country's best interest above pressure from a political party, lobbyists, and a re-election bid. The job of an elected representative is to risk their job every day to do what is best for their district, their state, and their country. I love my district, I love my state, and I love my country. If the people of the 4th District elect me, and I'm privileged enough to be re-elected, I have committed to three terms, no more. Then, I promise, I will voluntarily step down to allow another fresh face and a new set of ideas. Where have the career politicians gotten us? What have we gained by sending the same folks back to Washington over and over again? I want this campaign to set a precedent. The congressional representative from Indiana's 4th District will always be from the 4th District, and he or she will always commit to term limits. One of my favorite stories to tell when I meet folks around our district is that of a former GOP county chairman who, the first time he met me, stated, we were all trying to figure out who the baby-faced congressional candidate was that thinks he's going to run for Congress when he doesn't even have his driver's license. I laughed. I enjoy humor and I enjoy banter. What I don't enjoy, however, is the insinuation that only an older generation of politicians is capable of representing their home districts. It's time for us to encourage a new generation of leadership. The leaders of yesterday had their shot, and they shut our country down. It's time to make way for the leaders of tomorrow. My generation is coming, and my generation consists primarily of progressive liberals. If we don't start raising up the members of my generation that we agree with ideologically, folks willing to work towards progress and compromise, we are going to get left behind. I looked that man in the eyes, and I responded, Sir, with all due respect, I could introduce you to 86 men aged 18 to 40 that I served with in life or death situations, and not a single one of them would tell you that I'm too young to do this job. And the Founding Fathers didn't think so either. I'm angry and I'm worried when I think about our country's future. I see what our culture thinks is right and wrong, and I'm shocked by what you can find on a magazine cover while checking out at the grocery store. It is absolutely crucial that we start electing young conservatives, principled leaders of character who know that faith is more than crossing their fingers. Our future and our value system do not belong to the coastal elites. They belong to all of us. The future is ours if we take it, and I'm, exci I'm excited to share my goals and vision with the voters of the district I call home.